In the last lecture, we learned about use reducer react hook. Now in this lecture, let's see how we can use this use reducer react hook in our demo react application. For that, I'm going to comment this demo component from this app component. And I'm going to uncomment the previous JSX code from here. With this, let's save the changes. And if you go to the web page, we should see our demo react app with this login form. Now let's go back to VS code and here let's go to login component. And in this login component, you will notice that we have created these five states. And if you notice, some of these states are related. For example, this entered email state and email is valid state. These two states are related to email field. In the same way, this entered password and password is valid. These two states are related to password field as well as this email is valid, this password is valid, and this form is valid. It is related to the validity of the login form. Now we are creating these five states using this use state react hook. But we can also use use reducer react hook to create these states. In that case, using use reducer, we can create more complex states. Let's see that with an example. So first of all, we need to import this use reducer from react library now let's go ahead and let's use this use reducer inside our login component and we know that this use reducer is going to return an array so here i'm going to use the array destructuring syntax and let's say we are using this use reducer react hook for managing the email state okay so inside this array we are going to receive two elements the first element will be a state let's call it email state and the second element will be the dispatcher function so let's call it email dispatcher now remember that this lecture is the continuation of my previous lecture where i have explained how this use reducer works so if you have not watched that lecture then i will highly recommend you to watch that lecture first and then come to this lecture all right now we also know that this use reducer it also takes two parameters the first parameter is the reducer function let's call it email reducer and the second parameter is the initial value for the state so for example here we can specify the initial value for this email state and for that I'm going to use an object and to this object I will assign two properties the first property will be the value property so initially this value property should be empty string and also the second property will be the is valid property and I will set it to false so we are going to assign this object as the initial value for this email state. Now, wherever we are using this entered email, there we can go ahead and we can use email state dot value. Okay. So first of all, we are not going to use this use effect anymore. So I will comment this. I'll keep it for your reference. And now wherever we are using this entered email, there I'm going to use this email state and its value property. So here I can say email state dot value. Let's copy it from here and let's replace the entered email with email state dot value wherever we are using it. All right. So this is it. Now let's go ahead and let's create this email reducer function so let's go outside of this login component function and there let's create this email reducer function now some of you might ask why i'm creating this function outside of this login component function that's because inside this function we are not going to use any variable or state which we are creating inside this login component function whatever value we need inside this email reducer function we will pass it as an argument to the dispatcher function all right now this email reducer function is going to take two parameters. The first parameter will be the current state and the second parameter will be the action. Okay, and inside this reducer function, I'm going to write a switch statement. And to this switch, I'm going to pass this action. And in the last lecture, we learned that this email reducer function will be called every time we call the dispatcher function. And to that dispatcher function, we can pass some argument which gets assigned to this 
action parameter of reduce a function. So we are going to call this email dispatcher inside this email change handler function. And this email change handler function is going to be called every time we enter something in the email text box. So here let's call this email dispatcher. And here let's pass some value for this action parameter. So here I am going to pass an object. And this object is going to have two properties. Let's say the first property is the well property. And to this well property, we are going to assign the value which the user has entered in the email text box. For that, here we can say event dot target dot value. All right. And the second property here for this object, let's call it type. And here for the type, let's call it email underscore input. So basically, we want to use this type value inside this switch statement. So this object here, it will be assigned to this action parameter. So if this action type is email input, in that case, we want to return an object. And this object should have this value property and this is valid property. And this value property, we want to set it with action dot val okay so here to this section we are assigning this object and this object has this val property which is storing the value which the user has entered in the email text box and we are assigning that value to this value property here then we also want to have is valid property and here we want to set the is valid property with a boolean value true or false so here what we can do is we can say action dot well dot includes so we are writing the same logic here which we were using earlier we are checking whether the value which the user has entered in the text box if it contains this at symbol if it contains that at symbol in that case this is valid will be assigned with the value true otherwise it will be assigned with the value false okay so now wherever we are using this email is valid there we can use email state dot is valid okay so let's see wherever we are using this email is valid let's check that where we are using it so here we are using it so here we can say email state dot is valid all right and with this now we can go ahead and we can comment these two states so somewhere we are using this set email is valid as well so let me scroll down so here we are using this set email is valid for now let's comment this one okay we will come to it in a bit and now let's go ahead and let's comment these two states let's save the changes let's go to the web page and here you will notice that initially when the page loads at that time only this email field is set to invalid why is that that's because initially when we are assigning this email state with an initial value there we are setting this is valid to false so the initial state there itself we are setting this is valid to false and that's why in the web page when the page initially loads we can see that this email field is invalid now to avoid this what we can do is here we can assign this is valid with the value undefined okay and later only we will set this is valid with the value true or false if i save the changes here and if you go to the web page and now you will notice that now this field is not invalid initially but now here the validation will be checked for each keystroke so for example when i type a here you will notice that as soon as i type something here at that time only this uh, email field has become invalid now when i type something like abc at so now this string includes this at symbol so now this email field has become valid so here the validation is being checked for every keystroke now why is that that's because for every keystroke we are calling this email change handler function and internally it is going to call this email dispatcher which in turn is going to call this email reducer function and in the email reducer function you know for every keystroke we are checking the value the user has entered in the email field and there we are checking if it is including this at symbol or not so that's why in the email field currently the validation is happening for every keystroke but we don't want 
this field, this email field to be validated for every keystroke. So here what we can do is we can go ahead and we can set this is valid to undefined. Okay, here we want to validate this email field only when the blur event happens. Okay, so for that, when the blur event happens on this email field, you can see here we have this email input element. So on that, when this blur event happens, we are calling this validate email handler. So, and here we have that validate email handler. So here we can write the logic for validating the input field, the email field. And to do that, again, we need to call this email dispatcher. So we are going to call this inside this validate email. Okay. And here also we need to pass an argument for this action parameter. Okay. So here what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to pass an object here. Here again, I'm going to specify this well property. And this time I'm going to set this well property with this current state, this email state. Okay. So I'll copy it. I'll paste it here. And here I can say dot value. All right. And then we also want to set the type property. So this time I will say type as email underscore valid. Okay. Or validity, something like that. Now we are going to check this string. So let me copy this. Let's create another case here. Okay. Let's specify this string. So if case is email valid, in that case, again, we want to return an object. This object is going to have a value property. Let's set this value with this state. So here I can say state dot value. Or what we can also do is we can say action dot value because for this action, we are again receiving this object. Okay this object and it is going to have this value property and there we are setting the value as email state dot value. Okay. So here we can either use this state dot value or we can say action dot well. Okay. Something like this. But here uh, since we are already using this action dot well here and I just want to show you that we can also you know assign it like state dot value so i will use this state dot value here okay just for your reference but you can also go ahead and you can use action dot well then for this is valid let's set it with state dot value dot and then let's again use this includes function and to this let's pass this at symbol so now the email field will be validated only when the blur event happens on that email field. Let's see that. Let's save the changes here. Let's go back to the web page. Let's refresh the page. So if I type ABC, you see that no validation is happening right now. But as soon as I click outside of this text box, so when the blur event happens, then you will notice that this email field has become invalid. So now only the validation has happened on this email field. So here what we are doing is we are combining this entered email and email is valid into one state using this use reducer. Now we can also go ahead and we can create another state for this password field using this use reducer. Now I will give you this as your assignment. So go ahead and create a new state using this use reducer for this entered password and password is valid and see if it works. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.